Hi guys, welcome to Office Blokes React. I'm Office Bloke Dave. I'm Office Bloke Mike. I'm Office Bloke Dan. Together, we are the Office Blokes. Yep, yep, that's correct. That was a pretty intense uh, podcast moment, that. Was it? It could yeah. have been. I said together, I could have said anything that's after that. That's intense, Who knows? Yeah, yeah, Proper yeah, intense. Yeah, yeah. What yeah, does intense is, look yeah. like? That's intense. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was pretty, that, was, that was more smouldering, to be fair. That was, <laughs> found it hard not to just smoulder. <laughs> you know what I mean? All that burning alive. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we are going to check out the most intense podcast moments ever. Ooh. I wonder if we'll be on there from back when we used to do a podcast. Yeah. Were intense. You never know. Yeah. Never know if we're going to live or die that day. It was crazy, wasn't yeah. it? Crazy. <laughs> crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it was even balmy. <clears throat> I can't remember what I did. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. it. Yeah. Let's check it out. This is the most intense podcast moments ever. <laughs> Fat. I'm gonna play like this. What's the deal Space with Spaceball works. Highly intense on-air confrontations have been happening since the very beginning of broadcast radio, and the new era of comedy podcasting is no different. From false accusations, what the f is this? Okay. To Joe Rogan roasting his own guests, you don't understand That's what, what you're, you're saying. saying. These are the top five most intense moments in podcast history. Starting off with the time that Eddie Bravo went a little too deep into flat Earth. It doesn't it, matter if that's it's flat bad, or round. It doesn't matter. A, that's I'm a having bad fun with it. Fallback. You keep saying that. It's a bad fallback because what, what we're saying is there are conspiracies the problem is when you think everything is conspiracy you act as a psyop guy and you fuck people over that want to look at real conspiracies because no. the, the real conspiracy that's what is I like the gulf of tonkin that's what i thought too okay like the Gulf of Tonkin, mm -hmm. real, real, like Operation Northwoods, real things that really happened. When you look at those things and people explore them, they go, oh, I don't think they really killed Kennedy. Are you sure? Why don't you look at this? Look at this stuff. There's a lot of really crazy mm -hmm. evidence. When you start thinking that the world is flat, the dinosaurs aren't real, all this nutty shit that you believe, the problem is it discredits all these other things that you believe that might be real because the other things have some validity to them you just haven't looked into it that's all Eddie I used to say the same Eddie, stuff Eddie you're talking about the earth I being this, flat thousands was, of scientists have thing. looked into it you think they're all wrong that's so insane you haven't looked into it I have no you have oh my god <laughs> how could I not have you don't think I have? I'm watching you go down the rabbit hole. You don't think I've tried to pay attention to what the fuck these people are talking about? It mm, doesn't work. I don't think so. Eddie, there's websites dedicated to debunking it. It's dedicated to showing you the science, on the showing internet. you the math that you can do. How come when you check the internet, it's valid, but when I'm on the internet, it's not? You're not talking about the internet. You're talking about a uh, guy's YouTube video. No, it's not a uh, guy's. There's a lot of guys. There's a lot of people. Okay. But they're just YouTube videos. It's huge. Eddie. No. The science behind them is, is, is not it's verified big. by peer-reviewed journalists. Journals, the science of the earth, the, 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 the government science that's bought and paid for. Of course, you start talking about Eddie, flat earth so and the science. One of these guys shows up again on this list. So be I get lots of flat earth stuff on Facebook oh, for some reason. Man. The flat earth society and stuff. And yeah, I always click on the comment sections just to see are people really that stupid? Mm. And people will fight to the death over it. They genuinely... it's, it's crazy. The thing, the thing I don't get about it is the go oh yeah the government are telling you this and this why would the government lie about it anyway if the earth was flat then we would have known it for well, years, the government years, lie about they? a lot of things don't um, yeah but why would you want to do you not lie wanna, about that do you know what one of the theories is go that on. beyond the ice wall there's secret research facilities and secret military bases and things like that they don't want <laughs> us to see and where do they live the people on these secret research facilities and secret bases well, maybe, maybe the wall doesn't go right to the edge of the flat earth maybe you go it's over the wall and then there's a bit of an area must be on that is there a door i don't know because space doesn't along. exist either so <laughs> it's i think it's like paranoid delusions it's like truman show sort yeah. of syndrome yeah. for some people and they think they're the center of it all yeah so it must be right it's, it's bizarre so bizarre be sure to stick around until the end. Because at number four is the time Fresh and Fit visited Flagrant. Like, you guys, that's why I don't understand how you get, you don't see an issue with what you said. Dude, How's so that a comedian? But a comedian, a comedian. I, I'm all, I always so got to defend I can jokes. understand. I'm trying to be funny. I watched this one, by the way. Or listen to it. What did he it. say? Um, I'm just going to give you a bit of context on the guys, that Fresh and Fit podcast. Are they know, the guys on the left? The guys in the middle. Oh, right, okay. Um, it's like one of these red pill, alpha male... Mm. You know, they, they go on about like men should have loads of partners and women are only allowed to sleep with one no. person. And, yeah. you know, all that sort of yeah. like nonsense that we keep seeing crop up on a lot of these yeah, sort of yeah. videos. They really espouse those sort of beliefs. Mm. 
that's the sort of context yeah. and obviously oh, right. okay. flagrant guys are pushing back a little bit right. funny and I miss words some shit but then when I peel it back and I go to and I dig into what you're saying mm. it's still just as it's more troubling to so me. say that like yeah. say hey I misspoke I, I told the bad joke but you guys are doubling down and saying that you're like there's nothing wrong with what I said Nope, there's not, nothing wrong at all. But, See, I, but I don't. Like, but that's, that's cap. bullshit. Y'all both bullshit. said that you date black women as long as they fit the things that you normal, want. It's not a normal preference. But no, no, but, no, no. But like, no. Like, but like, okay, okay. You're taking Dublin Dark as like every black girl. We're saying yeah. Laquisha Lashonda. I'm not dating no hood black chick, bro. Hell so, no. so you misspoke. You made a bad joke. Nigga, we said it's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm saying so. You said so. You made a bad joke. So you wish you didn't say that. No. You like, but is you're being this, hypocrites. You're being hypocrites, ego, and this is a though, cop out. I don't know. I, I just feel like it's ego. It's like sometimes yes. we get in the situation yes, where, like, I've done this. I said some shit. Listen, we do this shit all the fucking time, yeah. right? You say some shit, and then you get all this backlash, and you're like, man, fuck all these people. I'm going to stand on this shit to the end of time. But if it's not really what you feel, then what you standing on? Like you, I think, are being the most honest. You, I think, you got too much yeah, ego, no, and you're not going to back off. Just that there's a lot of reading into yeah, this corn. clip from like a year ago of us no, just bro, having a good time. You're talking making it on about the, the clip. I'm making it about what you're saying right now. Yes. My preference is, which is but honestly you, bullshit. It is. I don't want to date black girls. That's the way every black dude that fucks white girls says it. I've dated black girls in my life. Hey, right, bro. Who, who the fuck hasn't except me? <laughs> you know what I mean, everybody gonna dabble in everything. It is the mentality that I have an issue with, and Alex is upset with the specific words, true, but underneath it, he's upset with the mentality. And okay. the words bothered him, but I think the mentality would still be troublesome to him, where it's yep. like, what is, I, I, I need a girl that's submissive. Like, that's, if y'all are really trying to help man. That shit is nice, bro, because I, I nice. got one that that's not, nice. and that's It's, it's nice, but it's bro. a lot of shit that's that, that is girls. difficult, bro. Uh, no, it's fine. A lot of stuff you guys say in general, I think, is stuff that's kind of childish. Okay. It is, I saw a clip where you were like, oh, the nuclear family's falling apart. What do you do? I don't get married. Just don't get married. You're actually trying to help, man. Are you talking to fucking incels who are 18 years old? You know what I mean? I mean that's some shit you say to college. I'm going to turn you from a simp to a pimp. Mm. All right, bro. Can we grow up? You I guys mean, are self-help. If, if, you if, are, hey, we're trying to help men. So either we're funny or help men and be real and be honest with yourself and don't have an ego like, no, I just, you know, I have a preference. Be honest. Have an honest conversation. Mm -hmm. And I don't think the manosphere or manaverse or whatever, I don't think it's a bad thing. I think there are people who are doing it really well. I, the roommates, Hafiz, who you, that's who put me on to you guys. Great. Mm -hmm. But let's just be mature about what we feel. And part of that maturity is, yeah, it was a bad joke. Yeah. I don't actually feel exactly that way. I mean, if you guys feel that way, that's fine. But we make our content, you know what I'm yeah. saying? People enjoy it. We, we make jokes on it. We provide entertainment. Yeah. We provide education. We do everything because if you just only provide, you know, self help stuff without any type of entertainment value, people I aren't agree gonna, with that. I think jokes are so we, we, no, the joke, good again. I don't have no, a problem with the joke. I'm telling you guys. Coming in at number three is maybe the. Yeah, I, the problem you've got with that is you, you, the way they're talking is they're trying to push their opinion on everyone else, aren't they? Yeah, that's what it is. That's what the Rise of yeah. Podcast has done. Yeah. It's like everyone needs to. It's so important what I've got to say. Yeah. I'm imparting wisdom on mm. all of you. Yeah. Listen to me. But he's right with yeah. the uh, the Asian kid there when he's saying like... Akash. Is that his name? Akash. Yeah. He's saying like... Um, admit it's a bad joke. It's just a bad joke. You didn't believe it. Move on. And this, But this is the next bit going on. But they're yeah. not. They're fucking standing by it. And yeah. it's wrong yeah. to stand by it like that. Yeah. Like The thing is that they... And I'm no expert on those guys. I've just seen clips like that. Mm. And I heard mm. that podcast. And I've never even heard of them. They, they, it's quite a big podcast. Yeah. But they, they talk about you know, sort of traditional values where the woman should be at home, yeah. the man should be the breadwinner, mm. you know, she should take care of everything, she should to a degree be submissive to the man and stuff. What about if it's a if it's a male male relationship or a female female relationship or I, th a, I don't think you know, they really go into I, I don't no, know. Again, I'm no, no expert. But the thing is they're not traditional men. No, they're not. You know, and they're trying to espouse these yeah. like nineteen fifties ideals, but mm. they're not you know, they're talking about being like shagging loads of women. Mm. And it's like, no, yeah. if you want to live that life, live that life, mm. be uh, monogamous and have that nuclear family. But you can't just go and bang loads of women and then want her to be at home washing the dishes the whole time. No. No. What's she going to do if you're out living like that? Exactly, yeah. She's going to go and live like that. <laughs> you would hope so. That's <laughs> well, uh, the problem that people listen to it still, don't they? A lot of, a lot yeah. of young, confused men listen to stuff like is it that. A bit like the, 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 what's the other guy, British guy, is it Tate? Tate. Are, are they I'm along that sort of type of line? Is that, that the, sort the, of yeah, the manosphere. They're all in that, yeah. 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 Like, yeah, yeah. And a lot of it is like, you know, be fit and healthy, eat well, go to yeah. the gym. And like, there's a lot but of that's things that's not for everyone say. either, is it, Dave? Yeah, I'm super fit and healthy. <laughs> uh, 
No, but the, like a lot of it is, you know, it's genuine for men that need that sort of thing, how to look after yourself. And yeah, there's think, nothing up with that. I think men have got to do men things and women have got to do women things independently with men with men, women with women. Yeah. I don't know, whichever way you choose to it. But when you're together in a, in a partnership, if it's a partnership of a male and female, then you're going to do things together as well. Yeah, but you can't you can't fucking put someone down and say like well, I'm going out and doing a men men thing. You can't do what you want to do. You got to stay at home and fucking just I'm make just sure I'm do, all right. I'm just going to do what I want do. all the time. Yeah. On a, and I'm yeah, going to tell you what you're going to do. Yeah, precisely. And that doesn't work. Like that, that seems to be what's behind a lot of this sort of stuff. Yeah. yeah. And like one of the there's lots of viral clips of guys like that saying to like women, how many men is too many? For, how many women is too many for your man to have slept with? Mm. And then ask the same question of men for their girlfriends. Mm. And all these men are like, nah, I want her to like have maybe made one mistake before mm. me. So maybe she's allowed to have slept with two people in her whole life. Yeah. But I, I've slept with 50. And it's like, fuck These off. These people just end up sad and lonely, won't they? They do. Or oh, with, oh, with one of them uh, girls that want a rich man and they'll just be there for him and be a, like a trophy wife and do whatever they say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because she's getting the money to go and do the little bits and bobs she wants to do, like have the nice stuff in life, you know, the nice purses, handbags, you know, uh, nails done, hair done, got yeah. nice holidays, and not working. That's the other side of the coin, that there are always some people that would go along Correct. with someone Correct. that acts like yeah. that, yeah. you know, if they're getting the reward mm. for it for certain things. But it but, usually gets pear-shaped yeah. after a while. Yeah, yeah it's, it's not the norm, is it? You well, know? For, for, a, for a young man, you probably think that having a girlfriend who greets you with your slippers and a pipe every time you come through the door seems like a cool idea. But actually, if you're in a relationship like that after a while, it's fucking boring. It's fucking yeah. annoying. It, it, it is annoying. Yeah. It's like yeah. clingy and needy. Yeah, exactly. I want to come in from work and be able to piss off and go and sit on my own for half an hour and <laughs> be left alone. By the time I get in from the pub. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The funniest moment on this entire list. The time Shane Gillis triggered an entire room of comedians on the You Know What Dude podcast when talking about daddy-daughter dances. I got a question. Do you, at the daughter-daddy dance, do you guys swap daughters and grind with the other kids too? <laughs> no. <laughs> they made that joke last time. Uh, <laughs> they did? Yeah. Not impressed. Uh, oh, I'm here. I'm not yeah, here. Listen, on? But here here's a, hang on one sec. <laughs> when I'm hot in here by Nelly plays, do you guys swap daughters? <laughs> Can you give this to him? That's called the bomb bandana. It's That's not what... a bomb, dude. No. I'll stand by that. No, no, you can't. We let you know if it's a bomb. It's like a crowd. You can't no. go on. You I'm can't go here. on stage and I'm go. I'm in the lion's den right now, dude. Listen, I'm dick fart. No, you can't go on stage and then you stink and then you go. No, it's not me. It's you. No, <laughs> it's you. You <laughs> fucking. Right. That was a bad one. So you you get... took a hot one. Take a hit. What was bad about it? I don't know. We didn't laugh. <laughs> what, the yeah, nobody you laughed. You two are friends. You have no that idea. That doesn't who I matter. I've, I laughed at you fucking ten times already. All right. All right. Don't fuck. This the is the wrong with this fucking shit generation. What are you they can't about? shake a hit. They can't take a hit. I've been I smashed. The shut the fuck up. I've been smashed on my podcast. I take most of the hits yeah. and I laugh if it's funny. One thing not funny. This fucking dip spitting fucking redneck deer cocksucking motherfucker. No. It's funny. It's not. You stink. You're all the fucking rated already. Shut the fuck up. I'll never work in this fucking club again. Oh. <laughs> Welcome to the show. <laughs> I gotta stop getting well, triggered, Verzi. Well, I talked to my therapist about this. I'm ready to get amped up about this dance, and then that just happened. So I, you just took my thunder away. I think some of it I just gave him was from the dance. That wasn't all towards you. Some of it was from this fucking twat. Uh, like what you're saying, yeah. Bobby? About him or the dance? No, no, about the dance. <laughs> Number two on this. I thought it was a funny joke, to be fair. Yeah, I needed a bit more. I don't know who he was talking to. No, I don't yeah. know who was going to the father daughter yeah, dance yeah, or yeah, whatever. Yeah, but yeah. I think just the concept of Did that what it was. Yeah, I thought it was funny. Yeah, it was. Concept. Yeah. This list comes to us from Taste Buds. When Joe DeRosa and Sal Volcano battling weed versus alcohol led to what they'd later call their most personal fight ever on the show. But what do you mean? Of course, you. you how is that not an. Uh, Sometimes you get me so upset. You you contradict yourself from sense to sense. I'm not contradicting sense. myself. Which is it, Joe? Is 50 milligrams not a lot of weed, or is 50 I'm milligrams enough to make you think you're going to die? Weed is way more dangerous than you make it out to be. Uh, I'm a college kid. I'm funneling shit. Pump.
stomach in the hospital. Oh my I'm God! It. Funnily, it's the same what are we, thing. No, it's not the I'm same talking thing. About Sal, the, the most common experience with each. Okay, Sal, I'm talking how many, about how many common times, experience. How, a lot. You know how many people I know that say I can't smoke weed. It makes me crazy. It makes me paranoid. I don't know anybody that's. I, no, 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 I take that back. I take that back. I'm not going to speak. I'm not going to speak in generalities. I know a lot of people that say I can't smoke weed. It makes me crazy. It makes me paranoid. I know people who are heavy mushroom and acid users that say weed is the devil it is the devil i know people nobody's that say, losing their families over weed nobody's losing their job over weed okay nobody's losing their life over weed bullshit okay? they are nobody's losing they their are. marriage no, no, not, not as much not. as booze oh, oh, okay okay, okay. Go talk, the, the go user talk to all the girls okay. go talk to all the girls i know that say they had to dump their boyfriends because all he did was sit on the couch and hit his bong and play video games all day okay go yeah, talk nobody's to all, losing go, anything go, over weed okay go talk to okay. all the people that have broken okay. homes because the guy okay. the parents, okay. people drink alcohol okay let's go back to the general user experience let's you say you just asked me to prove a point and i proved it and you, you shot you it ain't down. proven shit okay you ain't proven shit okay let's go to the regular so you experience. puking in the trash can is me having a panic attack okay so let's go to the i'm keep trying to go to the to the most basic experience for each thing i smoke a half a joint or a joint i chill out that night okay nothing's happening to me odds are if you're gonna drink you're either going to be able to stop or you're not. It's way more common for someone who's indulging in just the one drink or two drinks that night to end up getting drunk when they didn't want to and end up having a shitty day the next day. This way more common for an, the average alcohol user to end up with a bad experience from alcohol than it is for the I average agree. weed smoker and to, to that end up with a bad experience and to that from I a little bit of weed. This. To that I would say this. I will 100% agree with you that the immediate hangover of alcohol is far more robust than the immediate hangover or effects of weed. But I will not stand here and let you say that continual and habitual weed use does not have a long long-term horrible effect on a human being it does it makes people forgetful it makes holy them, shit joe why them... are you going back to is that mm. sat on his in a looks like there, it, is it yeah. blurred out I don't know. it just looks uh i'm not sure if it's blurred out it's just, on uh... the outside i could make out what it was it's been mm. bothering me but that looks like mm. it's been blurred mm. i kind of agree what he's saying which one? none of them are good for you yeah no no not at all. all i'm not i've never really used weed so i couldn't mm. really comment so on I, that, I agree with honest, him but... I agree with what he's saying. He's being, he's saying it's both of them are shit. Yeah, if, I mean, if you're lying, the other guys kind of say, no, it's not weed. Weed, you don't have any side effects. You don't have any uh, long term effects, and, all think, and he's saying you do. I think, I mean, from what I've read and heard over yeah. the years, you can definitely get long term effects. Well, you smoked a lot of weed, didn't you, Dave? Weed. Yeah. yeah there you I started smoking weed. There you go. Proves it. Made your echo ginger. I started smoking weed when I was thirteen. Yeah. And I stopped when I was probably about twenty-five. Mm. And what's what's your highest speed of walking you've ever done in your life? Be like half a mile an hour probably yeah, yep, yep. yeah. that's, that's quick that's quick low blood you, pressure right? no yeah. stress <laughs> uh, no but my, my pushback on that would be not many people wake up and drink alcohol first thing in the morning no, correct the vast majority of alcohol users it's in the evening whether you have a glass of wine a beer or 10 beers or mm. whatever yeah. whereas i grew up smoking weed all of my mates smoke weed growing up and um it was not uncommon for people to get up and have a spliff first yeah. thing in the morning mm. yeah and that's that's where it becomes dangerous like if if a lot of weed uses, to relax you out of that comatose state yeah. you've just been in for the last eight hours yeah. Yeah. you know you just and I'll, if people just got home and like ate their food and then six in the evening smoked a fat spliff and watched tv it's a different beast entirely yeah. than smoking all day do it during the day i mean if you're going work and stuff like that you know it's not ideal is it i mean like, i, I was know. when i was a student i'd mm. wake up and smoke spliff on the way to the met to get to go to mm. town to go to college yeah and things like that and it's just you can function like that when you're young mm. no responsibilities i'm not driving anywhere i've got no one to look after i've just got to sit in a classroom yeah. just kind of doing music yeah it made mm. sense you know for what i was doing but they're, they're both equally dangerous it for, doing, it? i know one of these uh, companies that closed down around here which was a, a big employer was like an apprentice that worked there and someone found out that he'd been smoking a spliff in the toilets when he was like coach builder sort of thing and yeah well he didn't do it again put it that way because <laughs> you know we work with like a yeah, machinery and stuff and machinery and angle grinders and stuff like that the most guys of them apparently just, weren't weren't impressed most of them were coming down from cocaine binges yeah <laughs> from the night <laughs> yeah. before yeah. at the same time yeah. so yeah that kid got caught yeah I knew loads of people that were drinking on the job at that yeah, company. Yeah, really? Wow. Yeah, so yeah, that's not good. Yeah.
It does. It makes people forgetful. It makes Holy them. Holy shit, Joe! Why them, are you going back to continued and habitual? We don't need to that's argue. What we're talking we don't about. need to argue. I thought I was gonna die. I was so high, and he's gonna pump my stomach. Let's go back to the way that most people experience these things. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. Most people I know that smoke weed smoke it habitually. Just they stop, smoke Joe. it daily. Stop. <laughs> take away the habitual. Just Tell, people's there, general. You can't take away the habitual. You're not an alcoholic or a pothead. Let's talk about that. That's, that's what I'm talking. Most about. people. That's what I'm talking about. So do you? I, I sometimes I feel like I'm going crazy. Do you I feel think, like I'm going do crazy? Do you think our friends? Do Let's you go back to the most relatable friends, form of this so argument? Do you think our friends that smoke weed uh, on uh, every night are potheads? Yes. Okay. Well, that's not how I would. That's not how earlier. What is a pothead? I would say around the clock pot smokers. I don't think somebody that has a drink every night is an alcoholic. I don't think somebody that hits weed every night is, is a pothead. I think if you... I if, mean, that's really the ter that's really exactly the definition. All right, so you drink every day, you're an alcoholic. You smoke every day, you're probably so a pothead. So if you have two glasses of wine every day, you're an alcoholic? I, no, well, yeah, Actually, textbook, you probably are, although I get it. Consuming this seven... Is, come on, guys. What are we talking about here? Seven drinks per week. Then then Sal and I are both alcoholics. Right, I mean, so, then, so, so your opinion is better than the National Institute on alcohol okay, abuse so and alcoholism. An alcohol you think These you're are an people that dedicated their okay, lives so you to think the you're study an of this. So you're an alcoholic. You agree with that? You're an alcoholic. No, seven? I don't. I don't have seven or more drinks a week. No are fucking way. Are you insane? No, I don't. Are you insane? No, I don't. Swear to God, hand to God, hand to God. Sal, stop. Hand to God. Sal, Joe, Joe, Joe. You. Stop wait a minute. It. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. Maybe this is an stop intervention. It, Sal. Maybe this is an intervention for you. <laughs> you believe that every week I consistently have more than seven drinks a week? I think you're out of your. At gourd. least have You're seven out drinks of your a week. Gourd. If there is least. a week where we hang and I drink one night, seven drinks, that's the one night. I will. I I'm telling you to Still your face drinks. right now. I, know, yeah. I would say <laughs> if you average my drink consumption over the course of a year and average, I don't even. This. Weeks that I don't drink. Weeks that I don't even have a drink. You, you're insane. Let's seven. Up or, a pot so is. you think I'm having? You think I'm having four at least? Two times in a week, I'm having four drinks a night. You just You're said, fucking you said, insane. You just said you have a drink with dinner very often. That's seven days in a week. If you have a glass of wine every night with dinner, that I would be seven drinks. I don't have a glass drinks. of wine every night with dinner. I ha I enjoy having wine with dinner, usually this if is, I'm out. I just hate... Joe, you just, you just make shit up. I don't make point. shit up. You just... But you Sal, I hang out with you every week. Oh, my God, Joe. My I goodness. Ha I hang out with you every week. Right, right. I hang out with you every week. Yeah, and when I hang out with you... Every Every week, every week. If I, if you see me at the club, do I? What do I have? I, if I a go drink. there, one. I've seen you have tricks. Right. Yes. A drink. Right. And then I go home. Right. And then let's say the next. Nah, let's, it's more like let, two, three. Let, maybe let's drinks. say I do. Let's say I do two nights of, of stand up a week. Uh, and one, maybe one night. Uh, let's say mm -hmm. I do three. That's average. One night I don't drink. Two nights I have. One night I have two. One night I have one. That's three. You're telling me I consistently have over seven a week. It, I don't. No seven. At least seven. I didn't say over seven. I, I don't. Just because you have seven a day. <laughs> I don't have seven a day. Okay. Well, if I was you right now and you said that, I'd be like, what? Yes, you do. The way you flipped out is insane. I don't have over seven drinks a week. Before we reveal the most. I don't believe either of them. <laughs> There's too much yeah. shouting. He doth protest too much. Shouting in there. Stress what levels are going to be through the roof. He's just getting wow. triggered by how many drinks he has per week. I know, yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, it's argument, horses for courses, isn't it? Absolutely. People, a lot more people need to say that to themselves mm. and to other people. Yeah. Some people are great smoking weed all the mm. time. Some yeah. people are great drinking often, mm. you know, and everything in between. Yeah. Yeah, I just, it's like I say, this, 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 if, no matter what you do in life, you're overindulging. Whatever you do, you're doing too much of. Oxygen. According, according to the according to the uh, the specialists. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, probably are. Mm. Probably oh. eating too much, probably watching too much telly. Yep. Everyone lies yep. to the doctor about how much they drink. No, I see. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I, I was. And they went, they went crazy at me. Really? They went no way. And I went. Well, you asked. You asked. I'm telling you. I always say a couple of bottles of wine a week, maybe. Yep. And they're like, that's that's a bit too much. Yeah, I'm like, no. you should see what I really do. <laughs> yeah. Well, I told them what I really did, and they went, it's impossible. And I went, and is that said, a challenge? And they said, do you know what they said to me? You won't live long. And I said, define long. So they said, 
you won't, you won't get past the 80s. I went, fucking fine. <laughs> I'll take it. 80s, yeah. is that long? Yeah. Rather be a, I went, I'll take that. A fun 60-year-old Correct. versus like a yeah. decrepit. Yeah. 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 What's it sat in the corner? They're just like, can't shit or piss in their own, <laughs> on their own. They have to get assisted pissing shit in in a bag, just sitting there slavering them, having their mouth wiped. <laughs> no, not for me. Are you like that now? Just because, <laughs> just because you can't, yeah. just because you, you stopped drinking when you were that's 27. That's isn't it? That's yeah. what you like after a football match. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and that's the way I want it to be. <laughs> most intense moment in podcast history please be sure to subscribe because at number one is the most famous confrontation on this list when brendan schaub went on tiger belly and accused bobby and kalila of being the masterminds behind his reddit hate it's a story that's been talked about to death at this point but it's still number one on this list by far and the- mm, i don't know him on the bottom right that's Brendan Sharp. You told me about him. Yeah, so he... Didn't he sue somebody over... Uh, he was going to sue Bobby Lee. Right. Um, <clears throat> there's a Reddit... He's, if Try and sort of do it quickly. He's got a, a podcast called The Fighter and the Kid with Brian Callen. Yeah. And they've got a Reddit page that used to be all things Fighter and the Kid, you know, and it was fans. But they all turned on him a couple of years ago. And the whole Reddit thread is just like churning out memes, taking the piss out of him, mm. trolling him. Yeah. You know, like they've really turned on Brendan because <clears throat> people just don't like him anymore. Right. Yeah, and um, he's accused Bobby Lee of being the person who set up the Reddit page right. and runs the Reddit page. And Bobby right. Lee's like, he doesn't even own a computer. You know, he's like the mm. least tech savvy person. Yeah. But then there's there's more to it. You know, there's like uh, accusations of Brendan cheating on his wife mm. that came out on her podcast, The Girl on the Top Right. And it's just a mess, yeah. basically. Wow. But it's one of the things that turned me off listening to podcasts. Because. This whole drama, I was, I was mm. following it on pages like this. And then I was like, why do I give a fuck about all these, yeah, like, exactly. all these millionaires arguing about who's shagging who and <laughs> blah, blah, blah. And it put me off a lot of podcasts. Yeah, that's his wife. That's, that, well, that was Bobby Lee's long-term girlfriend. Oh, okay. But it turns out she was cheating on him and... Then she convinced him to have an open relationship where she was just banging loads of guys. And <laughs> she's a bit of a dick, to be fair. Yeah. The line was, what am I going to do? Suck your unfunny dick. And then I yeah. I came back as with... As far as me, again, I, I didn't see it, but as far as she's saying, I, I asked her to walk my car, give her a, a ride. No, I, I think that... I you know I cannot speak for her. Yeah, I, was I can there, only tell I'm you. Saying. I'm saying I can only tell you what was said on that particular podcast. And, and again, if that's how she feels, she's valid to feel like that. And I'm telling you, that's that never happened. Okay, that's a situation you would have to talk to her about. But I'm going to get back to the podcast itself. Yeah, the what was said was that there was a guy. He was unfunny. I came back with, oh, that's a big clue. Something about a peach emoji. And then... But, but my thing with that, Clive, do you think that's nice? Oh, no. Mm. But I didn't say your name. But it's... it's. Hang on one second, Brendan. Let me tell At one mm. point, Brendan Sharp and Brian Callan, who we've reacted to Brian Callan, phoned up Bobby Lee and like started threatening him over the phone. Oh, really? And, like, you know, really aggressive. Mm. And somehow Bobby ended up stuck in the middle of this whole situation. So really the beef is between her and Brendan. Right. And then like girls that she's got a podcast with and Mm. stuff. It was just like such a bizarre, it it was just weird. The reason we haven't touched on Brian, uh, sorry, Brendan Sharp much on the channel is actually because he was copyright striking a lot of people. Mm. Right. So we've never reacted to his comedy special, Mm. which is on paper the worst comedy special ever released. Really? There's no jokes in it. Yeah. (laughs) Um, but he was copyright striking commentary channels and reaction channels that were saying it wasn't very good. Yeah. Mm. Oh, so like okay. a while ago when all this was going on, it was like, we just avoid the whole Stay thing. Stay clear, don't I? It is not mm. worth it. T- let me ask you this. Mm-hmm. If we're having this discussion about something that happened in the past and we're having a giggly little girl talk, where is the crime in that? There's no crime. You can do whatever you want. Right. I have no issue with that. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, no issue with it. All right. I'm, I'm just saying, is, I, that, is that nice? That's all. I'm I saying. have gone to you and said, if I could go back, if I had known that a tiny little giggly girl talk was going to spiral into this, I would have wired my mouth shut. But in my heart of hearts, while you may think it's not nice, and now I admit, not the nicest thing to say, it was just an anecdote. Sure. Yeah, without knowing some of the law behind that, it kind of yeah. doesn't really make much sense, no, does it? Not really, no. No, no it's a bit sort of low key, that one really, wasn't it? When it looks like he's got a uh, serious, uh, what's it though, uh, the guy with the orange hat? Brendan. Yeah. 
A serious one. Like a persona. Mm. Takes stuff, take stuff personal. He's the no. one that was, he was an NFL player for oh, a little bit. Yeah. Um, and then he, then he was in the UFC mm. and he was like not quite good enough to be at the mm. top. Yeah. But he was a decent UFC yeah. fighter and then transitioned from that to comedy. Yeah. And now he's a stand up comic. Some people say it's because he's mates with Rogan. Yeah. That he was given opportunities ah, right, and stuff. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it just looks a bit serious to me. Yeah, you think yeah. in a comedy scene, you just sort of like roll with the punches yeah. and just go with it, wouldn't you? Brush it off and just yeah. move on, because otherwise things just get worse, don't they? Yeah. If you think if you take too much to heart in comedy, yeah. then weak ego, you've got no chance. Yeah. yeah. He had yeah, a podcast absolutely. with Theo Vaughan called mm. The King and the Sting that used to be quite good years ago. Yeah. And uh, even Theo, when all this drama was going on, was just like started yeah. appearing yeah. on it less and less yeah, and yeah, then he yeah. left it mm. it seems like he's got a bit of a thin skin maybe this guy yeah, I, don't know. I agree yeah. Yeah. in anyway, comedy yeah. no good hope you guys enjoyed that don't forget to like and subscribe we'll catch you on the next one cheers, cheers. guys cheers.